Hey everyone, welcome back to the Deep Dive. Today we are diving right into seven beliefs that will change your life. This PDF you sent in, oh boy, is it thought provoking. <laughs> We're going to try to unpack it all and hopefully uncover some real gems you can use. Sounds fascinating. Self help's always changing, you know, but this book, even though it's a few years old now, gets at some pretty basic stuff that never gets old. Mm -hmm. And getting Rick Schnabel's take on it, he's the author, by the way, is really interesting coming from the advertising world like he does. Exactly. Okay. Talk about knowing how to influence people. Yeah. Makes you wonder if he's using those same persuasive tricks in the book. Right. Anyway, enough chit chat. Let's jump right in. First up, Schnabel tackles this whopper of a belief. It is not safe to be me. And he doesn't beat around the bush saying how much this one thing can hold people back. It made me think of those poor fleas in a jar. You ever heard of that experiment? Oh, absolutely. Classic learned helplessness. They learn to limit their jumps, even with the lid off, right? It's like when we internalize that not safe to be me idea, we hold ourselves back even when there's no real danger anymore. Like we've built our own invisible cages. Always second guessing, afraid to stand out, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And Schnabel links this all the way back to childhood, how hearing no constantly shapes us. Can you unpack that a bit? Well, think about it. Kids' brains are wired for approval, right? To avoid disapproval at all costs. So constant knows, it's like we learn our true self, I as something bad. And that fear of being disapproved of, it can stick with us, make us look for validation from everyone else instead of trusting ourselves. Suck in that loop of trying to please others, not honoring our own needs. That really hits home. Now, belief number two, I am not lucky. This one, I'm guessing, resonates with a lot of people. Schnabel tells this funny story about deciding to test out if he was lucky and suddenly... Bam, good things everywhere. Like he willed it to happen. It's really amazing how strong belief is, isn't it? This is where that whole reticular activating system comes in the RAS. It's like a filter in our brains, always scanning the world. But get this, it only pays attention to things that fit our existing beliefs. So if you believe you're unlucky, you're basically ignoring all the lucky breaks coming your way. Exactly. Think of it like this. You buy a bright red car, suddenly you see red cars everywhere, right? They were always there, but now your RAS is tuned in. Same with luck. Believe you're unlucky, you miss the good stuff. Believe you're lucky, and suddenly opportunity is knocking. That is wild. We have way more control than we realize. All right, belief number three. Everything is either good or bad. Schnabel takes a page from Taoism here, saying we got to dip the labels and find the balance. It's like shifting from judging everything to just being curious. Instead of good or bad, it's what can I learn from this? Even those tough times, the bad stuff... That's where the real growth happens. I got to go through the storm to see the rainbow, right? <laughs> okay, let's talk money. This one's a biggie. I don't have enough money. Shebel gets really honest here, sharing his own money struggles and how changing his mindset about it turned his finances around. Our beliefs about money run deep, you know? Upbringing, what we hear, past experiences, it all gets tangled up. And those beliefs, they directly affect how we handle money. Believe you'll never have enough. You're probably making choices that make that a reality. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. We're manifesting our own lack. But Schnabel says abundance is all about mindset. It really is. Not just thinking happy thoughts, but really digging into those deep-seated beliefs about money and flipping the script. Scarcity to abundance, that's the shift. Yeah. Once we do that, whole new world of possibilities opens up. Instead of, I can't afford that, it becomes, how can I make this happen? Small shift, huge difference. Now, this next belief, I think it's super relevant these days. I don't have enough time. Schnabel gets all philosophical on us here, even quotes Einstein to make a point about time being relative. Remember that quote about time feeling different depending if you're on a hot stove or with a pretty girl? It's true. Our sense of time is totally subjective. Flies by, drags on. It all depends on what we're focused on, how we're feeling, even what we believe about time itself. So how do we escape that always running out of time feeling. Schnabel says it starts with awareness. Got to really look at how we're actually spending our time, then make choices that line up with what matters most. He even has a system for it, 5 by 5 to thrive, which we can get into later. I like that he gives us something to work with. <gasps> All right, this next one is a big one for a lot of us. I am not enough. That feeling of not measuring up, it can really sabotage us. Yeah. This one often comes from not feeling seen or valued for who we truly are way back when. Shows up as perfectionism, people pleasing, fear of putting ourselves out there. Like we've always got this invisible measuring stick, comparing ourselves and always coming up short. It's exhausting, constantly trying to prove ourselves, never quite feeling good enough. And here's the thing. That belief, it keeps us stuck. 
so afraid to fail, to not be enough, that we don't take risks or go after what we really want. Schnabel says the way out is self-compassion, recognizing we're all works in progress, perfectly imperfect, you know? Embracing the flaws, mm -hmm. celebrating the strengths. Okay, last but not least, let's talk, it's not my fault, it's genetic. Mm -hmm. This one's tricky, right? Genetics matter, but Schnabel seems to be saying we've got more power than we think. Easy to blame our genes for our problems, right? It's a get-out-of-jail-free card, a way to avoid taking responsibility. But Schnabel says, hold on, what about epigenetics? Epigenetics. Got to break that one down for us. So epigenetics is all about how our environment, the choices we make, it can actually affect how our genes express themselves. Like our genes are the blueprint, but we have some say in how that blueprint gets built. So even if we're predisposed to something, it's not a guarantee. We're not stuck. Exactly. Our choices, our surroundings, our mindset, it all plays a role. Schnabel uses Einstein as an example. Guy wasn't exactly born into a family of geniuses. Shows that we're not just products of our genes. We can create our own destiny. Talk about empowering. So we've covered these seven limiting beliefs, and wow, they can really mess things up. But Schnabel doesn't stop there. He goes deeper into the power of the unconscious mind. Ready to explore that a bit? Absolutely. This is where it gets really interesting. Schnabel says that to truly change our lives, we got to go to the source, address these beliefs at their root, and that means tapping into the unconscious mind. It's like the engine room, right? Working behind the scenes, driving everything we do, and we don't even realize it half the time. Like, even a tiny little current can throw a ship off course. Yeah. Those unconscious beliefs, they can really steer us wrong. Love that analogy. And to dig into this unconscious stuff even more, Schnabel talks about something he calls the neurological bridge. That's where it gets really good. Basically, it's how our brains connect experiences to emotions and beliefs. You know how our brains are amazing at finding patterns, always looking for meaning. Well, when something happens again and again, especially when we're kids, our unconscious mind builds this bridge between that experience and how it made us feel. So say you were always criticized for your art as a kid. Even if you wanted to be an artist later, that unconscious bridge might be telling you you'll just be rejected, right? Exactly. And that belief can sabotage you in tons of ways. Procrastination, fear of putting yourself out there, you name it. The point is, just willpower and positive thinking won't cut it. We've got to address the beliefs themselves way down in the unconscious. Okay, but how do we even do that? It's like we need to be psychoanalyzing ourselves or something. That's where Schnabel's belief shift process comes in. It's a practical, step-by-step -step way to tackle those limiting beliefs and actually change them. He breaks it down into a few key steps. Want to walk through them? Let's do it. Hit me with step one. First, and this seems obvious, but a lot of people skip it. We have to actually identify the belief. Real self-reflection here. Honest self-inventory. What are the thoughts that keep dragging you down? What patterns keep popping up in your life that are holding you back? Shining a light on those shadows we like to avoid. That's it. Journaling is really helpful for this. Just notice those negative thoughts and write them down. Don't judge, just observe. Once we've found the culprit, what's next? This is where it gets interesting. Schnabel says to actually visualize the belief. Mm. Because it's not just an idea, right? It often comes with an image, a feeling, a physical sensation. So... Someone who doesn't feel worthy of love, they might picture themselves as small, hidden, or maybe feel a tightness in their chest thinking about relationships. You got it. Make Bye. it real in your mind, however it shows up for now. The picture, the feeling, everything. Okay. Got the belief. We're looking right at it. Now what? Time for some NLP magic. Neuro-linguistic programming specifically, something called submodalities. Submodalities, huh? Sounds intense. What are we talking about here? It's like this. Take that image you have for the belief. Submodalities are like the controls for that image. The brightness, the color, the size, even how far away it feels. Tweaking these, that's how we change how the belief makes us feel. We're basically hacking our own brains, turning the knobs and dials on our beliefs. Who knew? This is the fun part. Let's say that I'm not good enough. Belief is a faded old photo tucked away in a drawer. Now make it bigger, brighter, put it in a fancy frame on your desk where you see it every day. That's submodalities. Powerful stuff. So we're rewiring those connections in our brain, the neurological bridges, by messing with how the beliefs look and feel in our minds. Exactly. And Schnabel's got exercises for this. Try different things. See what works. Brightness, size, sounds even. It's like finding the right key for a lock. Okay, we found the belief. We're changing how we experience it internally. What's the last piece of the puzzle? It's about installing a new belief, something empowering, to take the old one's place. 
our brains are wired to connect the dots, right? So when we choose a new belief, one that helps us reach our goals, we're basically making a new neurological bridge, new pathways for our thoughts, feelings, actions, the whole shebang. So ditch that I'm not good enough for something like I am worthy of success, that kind of thing. Exactly. And guess what? Visualization comes back in. Just like we pictured the limiting belief, we're going to create a whole scene for the new one. Really see it, feel it, hear it, make it as real as possible in our minds. Give our subconscious a new script to work with. Rewrite the story about who we are and what we can do. Nailed it. And remember those jingles we talked about? Repetition, that's key. The more we say this new belief, the more we feel it, the deeper it sinks in. Brainwashing ourselves for the win. Okay, for someone who's hearing all this for the first time, what's the one thing they should take away from all this? Ooh, good question. I'd say it's this. Our beliefs aren't set in stone. We can change them. We're not stuck with whatever programming we picked up along the way. We can choose beliefs that create the life we actually want. We are way more powerful than we realize, huh? Absolutely. And Schnabel doesn't just tell us this stuff. He gives us tools, exercises, examples, even a wheel of life thing to figure out which areas need the most work. Like a personal transformation toolbox. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I really liked is how down to earth he is about it all. Sharing his own struggles makes it feel more like he's right there with us, not some guru judging us from afar. Totally. He's been there, done that, and he's sharing what he learned. And it's not just him. He talks about other people who overcame huge obstacles, like Walt Disney getting told he lacked imagination or Henry Ford bouncing back from bankruptcy. Talk about shifting those beliefs. Inspiring, right. It reminds us that success isn't about being perfect, it's about believing in ourselves even when things get tough. So for our listeners who've been on this deep dive with us, any final thoughts for them to take away and ponder? Here's something to chew on. If our individual beliefs shape our individual realities, what about our collective beliefs? What are we all believing in that's shaping the world right now? And how can we each play a part in creating a better, more positive reality for everyone? Now that's a question worth thinking about. <laughs> And on that note, a huge thank you to all our listeners for joining us for this deep dive into seven beliefs that will change your life. We hope you walk away with some valuable insights and are ready to unlock your full potential. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep believing in the incredible power you have to grow and transform.